This is the Guns Magazine podcast, episode number 82. Hi there, and welcome to the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting people who make up the world of shooting, hunting, and the firearms industry. Before we get started, let's talk about our great sponsors. Boyd's Gun Stocks are the presenting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast, and they are the largest aftermarket gun stock maker in the world. Boyd's Gun Stocks just fit your body better. They offer gun stocks for over 155 brands and over 1,200 different models, and you can try their 22 stock shapes in 20 different colors and experience the better fit and incredible beauty they offer. Celebrating 40 years in the business this year in 2021, shoot better with Boyd's. For more information, visit boydsgunstocks.com. The supporting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast is Hodgden Powder. Established in 1947, the Hodgden Powder Company has grown into the U.S. largest supplier of smokeless black powder and black powder substitute propellants. These great powders are distributed under the Hodgden, IMR, Winchester, Ramshot, Accurate, Pyrodex, Triple Seven, Blackhorn 209, and GoX brands. For more information about all these great products, visit Hodgden.com. Well, today we're taking a walk down memory lane as we revisit the greatest hits of the gun cranks. In case you didn't know, the gun cranks, myself, Tom McHale, and Roy Huntington, have our own video channel on YouTube that's drawing rave reviews, lots of attention, and only one or two death threats. So, today, let's listen to a couple of our favorite segments from The Gun Cranks. I just got back from a very cool training week sponsored by the folks at H&K at a place in Florida I'll tell you about in a minute. So I want to talk about super secret ninja tactical stuff. Game? Game. Let's go. And And that is... Well, more specifically, my big epiphany was the everyday use of lights. So so I was at a place called Waft Training, W-O-F-T. You can find them at WOFT.com. They have got a pretty epic facility going on down down there and their big specialty and claim to fame is scenario training so one of the scenario areas is basically a big almost like a hangar bay where they've built an observation deck up top behind protective plexiglass because there's lots of simunition shooting going on in this place they pull cars in there and they can basically build things like a parking garage right turn the lights out and do all sorts of training scenarios where you go into the unexpected and make decisions and live with the consequences so cool stuff. I don't know. Do you guys do you guys carry lights every day? Like every single day? Every day. Every single day. Every okay. single day. And this is my new favorite. I, I was gonna say this streamlight, streamlight wedge. Yeah. This thing is the really bomb. Is. See, see, this is not fair. You didn't tell me we were gonna talk about lights till I got down here to my man cave. So I actually have that exact same light, and that's my default carry light too, and I can't even hold it up to prove it. So thanks a lot. And why why is that? Tell us why that's your default. Because I have a feeling that's important. Okay, so I I won't bore you with all the details, but let's just say I ended up uh, walking to my car in the pitch dark because uh, the power went out in the parking garage, and I had another type of light that I thought was pretty simple. Big tail cap button, but you can change modes. You can, you know, five different intensities, and you can turn strobes on and off. And at one point, while getting knifed in the back by two different guys who were posing as drunks, I ended up strobing them putting them on dim light while shooting, strobing some more, turning it off. I'm like, you know what? I'm not as dumb as I look. And I'm sitting there as I'm bleeding out on the floor. Oh, by the way, these were electric shock knives. Oh. So it wasn't like a little rubber thing that goes, oh, I gotcha. It was like, <laughs> like taser knives. Yeah. So so that kind of sucked, but but it was good. It was good training. So, so anyway, I'm sitting here thinking, I got to switch my carry knife, my carry light, right? Yeah. One button yeah. on. Full power, period. <laughs> right. Yep. Simple, oh, you're simple right. Simple is good. Well, you know, yeah. I think the full size duty lights and Brent, you'll, I'm sure, agree with me. Were the my favorite were the stream lights, and you just you had one button and you pushed it and they turned yep. on all the way yeah. right, and yeah. there was no messing around with anything. And yeah, I, I agree completely. Because a lot of times, remember when the strobing first started to get popular? Everybody did that. I did that. You'd get a light. First of all, you had to read the instruction manual to know how to turn <laughs> it on. 
which was ridiculous. And then at all the same thing. Every time you turned it on, you'd like go strobe, bright, low, yeah. dim, infrared, <laughs> laser. Uh, you know, and then and laser, uh, yeah, microphone, you know, f- well, feed I, I your thought, dog. It was I just was ridiculous. I was being clever with the strobing. I thought, ha, I'm going to be smart with this. Like, because I probably did like 12 scenarios in a row and everyone was different. So it's like, okay, so the thousand lumens in the face didn't prevent this guy from trying to stab me. So the next time I went through the scenario, I said, I'm going to hit him with the strobe right away. Because according to the internet, when you put a strobe light on somebody, they instantly drop to the ground in seizures and start crying, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, guess what? He still tried to stab nope. the living crap out of me. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. Plus, you can't see yeah. either. That was the other thing that they used to do. They'd well, say, oh, that. turn a I, strobe I on. I fell to the it's floor like, in seizures crying. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, I can't see. You know, I, I, I went I was in a class one time, and I, I want to say Dave Spaulding was there. And, and we were talking after one of these events, and they did the same thing. He was the bad guy with a gun, and they so they strobed him. And so Dave said, I couldn't see anything. I just kept shooting. <laughs> <laughs> and it still, it still hit the guy a half a dozen yeah. times, you know. It was really, because you can tell all the, the flashlight people who were there, they were all like looking at their lights going, what's the problem? You were supposed to die. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll find didn't. this hard to believe. And I've got a pretty good sample size, as I think Roy does. Scumbags don't read internet forums. They just don't. Well, they should. <laughs> they should. Believe. They should know all this cool guy stuff, they but they don't. They're just scumbags. <laughs> Because they can't read. (laughs) Yeah. You know, we could lend a couple of other things is that there's a lot of really small lights. And I have a couple that I keep in my pocket. But that's a backup light. In other words, you know, that's in case your other lights. Because I was on a traffic stop one time. My big duty flashlight battery died. My one on my duty belt, the backup light, Mm -hmm. died on this felony hot stop. And I ended up using my little pocket AA battery as I actually finished the hot stop. So Clint Smith was always famous for Mm -hmm. saying one is none, two is one. And it's really true. But I would recommend, though, if you carry a significant flashlight all the time, because you have to see in the dark in the daytime sometimes, make it big enough that you can actually grab onto it and hold it and stuff. And I will say that modern, these modern modern lithium, I guess they're, are they lithium rechargeable yeah. batteries? Lithium ion. Now? Is they're lithium? magic yeah. is what they are. Yeah, they're magic because you yeah. can recharge them and they hold a charge for months and months and months and months, where the old days, you'd charge them and a week later, you'd turn on it yeah. and it'd go. Well, and, and yeah. the new ones. They finally figured out you don't want to have to take the the darn thing apart to charge the battery. Now you just plug them in and bada bing. Roy, I want to go back to something you touched on just a second ago. Uh, You said even in the daytime, sometimes it's dark. But the other other kind of epiphany was I, I carry a light with me a lot of times, especially at night. But I wasn't, let's just confess and say I wasn't in the best habit of carrying one in the daytime. It's daytime. What do you need light for? But just as a home experiment, can I, I don't know if I can say this without us getting a giant liability lawsuit. Try shining one of these new lights in your own face for a few seconds in broad daylight and see if it doesn't wig out your vision for 10 or 20 or 30 seconds, you know. It's a good good distraction. If you ever need a distraction or a nonviolent deterrent to somebody who's obnoxiously getting in your space, no harm done. Just like, hey, pack off a little bit, buddy. That's they actually work pretty darn good in the daytime. I think that wedge is is 300 lumens in its default setting, and that'll get your attention. You know, and, well, yeah. and it does thousand because right? it's it's 300, and right. then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I like that because this light doesn't do anything yeah. but that. Yeah. In other words, it turns on low where you could see to get the mail and take the trash out and all that, and then it turns on blow, blow you know, burn your eyes out. And I really like that idea, though, about don't be afraid to shine that in some bum's right. you know, eyes in the daytime because they're going to go, hey, yeah. man, what are you doing? Hey, you know? You're not showing a gun. It's not pepper spray. It's not assault. It's a mm. little obnoxious and annoying, and somebody might think you're really weird. But in that transition stage, if you don't know if somebody's just trying to get close to you because they're dumb or because they got bad intentions, it's a good way to find out, yeah. right? Well, plus, so, if hey, anybody says... <laughs> Well, they say, oh, well, he was really mean. And the cop's going to ask you, really, what'd you do? And you say, well, I shined a flashlight on him. You say, I couldn't see well. It yeah. was dark. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, guess that's I will not a say, bad though, thing. there was a time when the strobe flashlights really do work well. If you're at the disco and they just don't have enough light or you want to solo <laughs> dance. <afraid> <laughs> Staying alive. So, uh. I, I did try that in one of the scenarios, and they all stopped, you know, doing what they're doing because I was being so weird. So th- there is something to be said for that. Well, because all the the new young people have no idea what a disco is. What do you like? Throw that or what do I do? 
I think we beat this into the dirt. Do you guys agree? So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So everybody, go out. Get your. Go out and get yourself woo! a good flashlight, and then stick it in your pocket woo! every morning. Yeah. You know, there's a hot new category of guns, and they're called. <laughs> well, nobody really knows what they're called. <laughs> are they micro? Are they subcompact? Are they compact? But I am here to tell you something. It all began with the phaser. <laughs> Because the phaser was the original compact concealed carry gun, like this Springfield Armory Hellcat. Notice some similarity here. The Hellcat holds 13 or 14 rounds. The phaser holds 11 billion (laughs) rounds. And the Hellcat has a TV set on the top. The phaser has a TV set on the top. You see what I mean? So there's a lot of... There's a lot... They're almost identical. (laughs) But I think it does beg the question, though, that everybody knows Hellcat. I mean, you name it. Everybody's got one of these guns now. Uh, Ruger Max 9, you know, the P365 from SIG. Taurus's new gun. There's one or two other ones out there at least. I think we all own them. We all like them. We all carry them. I don't know what to call it. And the other thing is, why do we and zillions of other people like these guns? Gentlemen, wade in. Well, Roy, I I am not sure why you would <laughs> yeah. not use a phaser. <laughs> I, I wish you, I, good thing you don't have a red <laughs> uniform shirt on. Uh, well, I, I think, first of all, it's funny. It's an arms race. We're all trying to see how small we can get. And, folks, it's already been done, but with oh, I, I wouldn't necessarily consider that a, a straight-on fighting pistol. But it's a pain in the neck carrying a gun. And Will Dab said it best recently that it was cool for about three weeks. And then it just gets to be a pain in the neck. So smaller, lighter, that's a good thing. And I think that's the big thing. And now, right, frankly, I think it's kind of the cool kid's gun. Everybody's got one. Everybody wants to carry one. I do have to laugh because it's an arms race to see how many more rounds they can stuff into the magazine and still keep the gun about that big. So pretty soon they'll probably announce a 27 rounder that only sticks out a half inch from the butt. So I, I think mainly it's 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 the cool thing of the moment. But there's nothing wrong with them. Well, you know, I like to call them medium size. I I, I have a little trouble saying compact. Because they're, most of these are a little too big to carry in your pocket. You know, unless you're kind of a big guy and you've got loose, you know, cargo pants. They make really nice in your pocket, like a coat pocket. They're, they're really nice, I think, to carry appendix or inside the waistband or on an outside your waistband holster. You don't even know they're there. But I agree with you, Brent. Is there does seem to be the arms race. And uh, Springfield just introduced the 15-round magazine for the Hellcat, which does extend the grip frame just a little bit, but not too much. But we have to be careful, though, because it, it's I see this happening with cartridges. I remember, like, with the 9mm, and then they want a 9mm plus P, and then they want a 9 by 23 And then it's like, and then somebody else says, well, why don't you just buy a 38 Super, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, so, so I think with these guns, once you start adding on all this stuff and extended magazines and all that, maybe you should start looking at more of a real holster pistol at that point. So I I think there's actually a too small, and and granted, this is a little bit of personal preference here, but I I want my pinky on there. So when I use something like Hellcat or the GX4, the the Ruger, I want the extension or a slightly longer mag because, okay, here's physics for you guys. You ready? It's today's math lesson. This finger, pay attention. (laughs) This finger right here accounts for something near 40% of your ability to control recoil. Well, now, if you think about it, it makes sense, right? Bore's up here. This pinky is not as strong, but it's all the way down here. So it's able to put a lot of force on that grip. So this is an important finger mm. right there. I want to use sense. it. No, that actually makes sense. Prove I think that's wrong. one of the challenges. Yeah, well, it's one of the challenges with like a J-frame. A lot of people, you can only put two fingers on a J-frame. Yeah. Uh, but I think the round butt maybe of a J-frame. Hey, Roy, was that an AMT that. backup? Uh, uh, no, actually, that this was a... Uh, Bujakowski TP70, oh, okay. which will okay. be my next insider. Yeah, but it's it's what it's your classic of yeah. you can only get about a finger or two on the grip, Very and he's cool. right about that. I think it's one of the charms of these small micro medium pistols that we're talking about, at least for me, is the fact that I can actually hang on to the darn thing. I have what I would call right mainstream medium size hands. I can actually shoot this gun and I can shoot it like I shoot a full size gun. I wouldn't hesitate to take like a three day handgun classic gun sight using a Hellcat uh, yeah. because it doesn't really beat you up. 
And a lot of the truly micro guns, like I have an LCP-2 380 from Ruger, and I'd be a little hard-pressed to take a three-day handgun class with that. As a matter of fact, when I was a police officer and I worked at the range, during a semi-auto transition period, we had a detective show up with a Walther PPKS, Mm -hmm. and it was a three-day transition class where we were going to shoot about 500 rounds. (laughs) Well, he lasted about an hour and a half (laughs) with that gun. And he was like, oh, man, you know, we we sissified him and everything afterwards but he went ahead and went to his full-size duty yeah. auto after that and yeah. I think well for good reasons, you know before so. we end this though yeah. i've got to say what we usually hit on at some point because it really is the overarching truth if you're going to carry one great but learn how to shoot the stupid thing go buy some ammo go buy a lot of ammo and i know it's hard to find and it's expensive but what you're going to carry make sure you're good with it because even if you got the cool kid gun of the week it's not going to do you any good if you're missing really fast and carry and Carry it. Unlike Tom's flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to hey. go there, but I was, hey. oh, okay. I was unlike you, I was too nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Busted. Okay. But I've changed my ways. I learned. I'm not that stubborn. Well, not all the time. All right, everybody. It is time for my favorite segment, reader mail, viewer mail. We get lots and lots and lots, lots of mail. I get all the mail. We thought it would be fun, educational, and maybe even entertaining to share some of the emails we get. We've got, do we have all the answers? I'm thinking we don't have any of the answers, but no, I don't know. No, we We have have all all the the answers. answers. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're going to give it a try. I'm going to, this one, uh, can I start? Can I do the first one? Go ahead. Okay. Because this one, this man, Nate, gets an award. If we had an award, I'd give it to him. Okay. It's a little dated, as you can tell. Yesterday, I took part of my stimulus check and bought myself a brand new Kimber Micro 9 and a set of Hogue grips. I hope the Biden crew appreciates my support of both local business and American manufacturing. I know I do. Way to Buy a gun for go, America, mate. by golly. <laughs> yep. Buy a gun you for know, America. That, I mean, that's just an example. That's sacrifice. That's patriotism. This guy's got it all, right? <laughs> well, considering he just spent his own money on his own gun, <laughs> considering he hey, probably hey, paid hey, that hey, in hey. taxes to no, begin no, with. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it was free money from the government, from the <laughs> Beneful. That's a dog food, right? It's appropriate. The Beneful beneficent. government. <laughs> I don't know. I thought know. Beneficent was like a villain in Cinderella or something. Thing or yes, one of those movies. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I saw wait, but I saw a funny cartoon the other day and he said, I'm from the government. He says, I'm gonna give you your benefit check. And the guy said, Cool. And then the government goes, Can I borrow your checkbook real quick? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, cynics. I, here I am. I want to give Nate an award for doing the most productive thing possible with his stimulus check, and you're making fun of it. So <laughs> you guys just shut up. All right, Brent. Okay. What, you got? what I've got is a letter that we get a whole bunch uh, every week. I know Tom does. And this kind of will represent all of those letters. It says, Dear guys, thank you for finally publishing Gun Crank Diaries, which is a wonderful anthology of Connor's work and include stories prior to my subscription. As a long-time subscriber to both Guns and American Handgunner, Connor's articles were always the first ones I read, not to disparage the other brilliant writers. I'm sure that I represent all of Connor's fans who would like to email him, but do not want to invade his privacy by sending uh, anything to his old AOL email address. Could you please publish a current email address for those of us that want to let him know how much we miss reading his stories and wish him well? You might as well include how we can contact the rest of your contributors who don't mind getting feedback. Well, I will say, I actually brought this up so Roy can address the John Connor situation. He's retired and probably not coming back. As far as uh, writers in general, though, we're different than some magazines. Tom and I both answer reader mail. We may not answer every single piece, but we at least try to read them. And if they reference another writer, one of our great staff, we always make sure to try and send it to them. And again, they may not have time to write you back, but at least they will see it. So unless it's completely nutty, which we get two or three a month, I always make sure, and Tom does too, that we try to send those letters to the writers, and they appreciate it. But you got to understand, we get a lot of mail. We have to serve as the gatekeepers because our writers... Writers like their privacy just like everybody else does. So part B of that, Roy, talk about the gun crank diaries. I've known Connor for almost 40 years. It's amazing to think about that. But he was a soldier. He was a policeman. He was an entrepreneur. He was a lot of things. What you see in the pages actually is really him. And that's just all the things that he did. And I know that because I was actually there for some of those things. But he was, as he likes to say, blowed up too many times. Toward the end of his retirement, he just simply got 
Just tired. He was worn out. He used to always say, it's not how old you are, it's the number of miles on the frame. He has a lot of miles on the frame. And so he finally just said, I, I just really need to stop. I need to just relax and stay as well as I can be. And that's what he's doing now. And part of that is that as much as he doesn't like it, he just doesn't want to have to respond to the thousands of people who want a, a moment of his time. Because when you multiply that by hundreds and thousands, suddenly that's a lot of pressure to be under. I know for a fact he sends his fondest. I know for a fact he appreciates it. I know for a fact he loves having all of the old gun cranks in that book uh, to get out there to everyone. And so if you do want to share something, you know, send it to Brent or Tom and they'll know. And then every once in a while, one of us will send him a note that just says, hey, we just want to let you know everybody's really happy about the book and, you know, and hope that you're doing and well. Before so we get off the topic, you go. you go to Amazon.com, Gun Crank Diaries. You can order an actual hard copy. And we understand some folks don't like Amazon, but it's it just what it is. It's the only game in town and it is selling like hotcakes. Your turn, yeah. Tom. Okay, so this is this falls into the "come on, guys, work with us" category. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna call it the "cry me a river" category, but that's that was kind of rude. Wow. So, <laughs> how about "come on, work with us" here? So, from Martin, I am a dinosaur. Got some self awareness, but I have a flip phone I carry for emergencies. I couldn't even tell you the number to it. Your latest contest requires scanning one of those psychedelic postage stamp looking things or get a postcard and mail it in. It goes on and on and on about the trials and tribulations of entering to win a free, free gun. Free gun. It's for and for winning a free did I say free? Free. Free gun. I think he said free. Okay. <laughs> Like, come on, guys, we, we give away a gun every issue of, of all the magazines. You know, you, you can mail in a, an index card with your name and address on it. It's legit. You know, people get these things, random selection every time. So we really try not to make it that hard. <laughs> mail in the postcard. And be creative. You should see some of the postcards we get. Wink, wink, uh. hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. You know, when the war was going really big overseas, we used to get them written on the back of MRE really? packages. Nice. <laughs> yeah, sent in by GIs. Nice. That was really fun. Yeah, that was cool. Or sometimes you would get a family picture with grandpa and grandma and the kids and say, this is my family. We're all shooters, you know, with all the information. So have some fun with it, like uh, Tom Very says. cool. Well, I've got one. All right, what else we got? Okay, I got one from Jerry, and he's talking about Roy's cover gun article in the June issue of, of Guns. He did the Cimarron Smith & Wesson Number no. 3 American, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty cool old-school gun uh, repro that Roy did the cover story on. We got this letter from Jerry, said, Took it out today. First off, let me say it's a well-made, tightly fitted, good-looking revolver of delight in hand. He goes on to tell about shooting. And then he said, I took your advice for offhanding with a slight modification. And he said in quotes, Release that fair maiden snidely whiplash or prepare to meet your maker. Kudos to Roy and everybody else. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I think I yeah because what I think I said on hand yes. are you ruffian you know or something like that yeah, yeah. good for yeah. him I love as that a, exchange as a that we have correspondent if you bring in Snidely Whiplash or possibly Rocky the Flying Squirrel I'm always going to read that nice <laughs> yeah hey you know he he yep. still watches cartoons I do too, just so Seriously. you know and yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have a problem with yeah. that <laughs> no I support okay, it so good or there'd be All a right. mail about you <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got, I got another award. This is for a brilliant idea of the day, and this is from Andy. And uh, just as a bit of background, he's writing in about the whole 80%, you know, receiver fiasco where the government wants to ban all the ghost guns that, you know, because a lot of um, the gangbangers these days are driving around town and they have like a mill <laughs> set up with a generator in the back of their car. And what they do is they mill these 80% guns and then they use them for drive-bys and stuff. So it's a real problem. But anyway, Andy has a, a great suggestion here. There's an old saying, change the name and change the game. I suggest we refer to 80% guns as personal use firearm. Puffs. <laughs> I like yeah. that. And, and now it goes on, and he said that he says that that would play really well. Who could ban a puff? Yeah, you know, and uh, and or you could turn it around the other way and say that the guys in office now are afraid of puffs. Yeah, 
<laughs> so, that's brilliant. So I love this. That I thought, Andy, that's a brilliant, brilliant idea. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Um, we got we got time for another one? It. Yeah. Okay. Do it. Close this up. Oh, okay. Well, I can do that. Dustin writes, Dear Brent, my name's Dustin. Been concealed carrying since I was 19. Love your stuff. I was listening to one of the podcast episodes, and I hear you guys talking about different things and ways for everyday carry. And I heard you say you carry a man purse, a.k.a. fanny pack. Laugh out loud. I would like to suggest you look into a holster utility belt type thing called a belly band. You can find them on Amazon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Keep up the awesome show, blah, blah. Well, I've, I've used a belly band, and I would bet Roy's tried one out. Basically, it's just a big elastic thing with a pouch in it. I did write back to Dustin, and I said I've used the belly band in the past. Personally, I didn't find it comfortable. I'll agree it's great for deep cover and keeping things secure, but it comes down to body type. I'm guessing you haven't spent as much time in the buffet line as I have. It was like wearing a corset. Not that I've ever well, worn that a one corset, time, right? okay, but I was just trying to... There was that one time. But that's, yeah. No, I'm with you. I don't know how they're not fit for man or beast. So Yeah. Well, that was but, a lot of fun, on, guys. I'm glad we I did lied. all this. I, Uh-oh, I know one that's more. never happened what? before, but I lied. I told a little fib because I, I got to share this one because I'm going to choose this. This is from Chip in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And I, I won't read the whole thing, but uh, basically he said, few weeks ago he said he couldn't find any new episodes of gun cranks and he really enjoyed the show and hope it's not been discontinued and i pulled out a chips letter because we got a whole bunch of letters like this so we actually were doing some retooling and some strategic strategic is that what we did yeah so gun cranks is back new and imp- hopefully well can we say improved we're never improved we're not as yeah. bad not as bad okay but anyway chip thanks for writing in and everybody else who wrote in too we're on it thanks for letting us know y'all have a good one where was he from? Muscle, Muscle Shoals. Muscle Shoals, uh, Alabama. Because I, I knew somebody who came, was from Squirrel Fart, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> so that's just, go Alabama and thinking of those good town um, names. On huh? that, that note, note, thank you for joining us with Reader Mail. Uh, next time I do have a, an announcement. Roy will not be yeah. joining us for the Reader Mail segment, but we'll see. Brent and yeah. I will see you next time. Editor at GunsMagazine.com and editor at AmericanHandGunner.com. Keep those cards, letters, and MRE boxes coming. We have a lot of fun on Gun Cranks, and you can too. Just tune in on YouTube at Gun Cranks. And with that, we hope you're enjoying the Guns Magazine podcast. Guns Magazine was first in the business, and we're bringing you the most interesting chats in the gun world. If you've got questions or comments about the show, please email me. That's editor at gunsmagazine.com. Make sure you subscribe to us on your favorite podcast catcher, YouTube, and of course at gunsmagazine.com. And while you're online, don't forget to check out our great sister publications, American Handgunner Magazine and AmericanHandgunner.com and AmericanCop.com. We'd also appreciate it if you'd share a favorite episode or some kind words on your own social media. And don't forget to check out the presenting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast, Boyd's Gunstocks. Learn more about the 1,200 different model gun stocks they make at boydsgunstocks.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For the entire staff at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting. Get shooting.